On the outskirts of downtown Houston sits a giant structure once known as the eighth wonder of the world. was the first ever domed stadium, one of the top attractions in the entire US, and the largest indoor space ever conceived at the time of its construction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Astrodome, the eighth wonder of the world. Designed to become one of baseball's greatest landmarks, it went on to do so much more, hosting some of America's biggest concerts, sporting contests, and even stunt shows of the mid-20th century. Whoa! Elvis, the Rolling Stones, Frank Sinatra, they all played here to massive crowds. But for more than 15 years, the legendary Astrodome has been closed and left to rot. Now that it's a recorded Texas landmark, destroying it is near impossible. But all previous attempts to redevelop this fallen venue have failed, and so it's remained empty, a shell of its former glory days. Could an ambitious $1 billion plan finally answer the question of what to do with the Astrodome? But that might just be about to change. The 1960s in Houston, Texas was a time of dramatic change. With its population nearing a million residents, the city had just completed a huge land grab to expand its borders. By 1962, many Houstonians were profiting from the new oil boom, and NASA was busy building its manned spacecraft center, the control hub of the Apollo program. Houston was on the up, but there was one thing that all major US cities had that this one didn't. A major league baseball team. And not only that, even if it could acquire one, they would need a suitable place to play, ideally somewhere that could serve other purposes too. Who would step up to the plate and solve this problem? Enter Roy Hofheinz. A former judge and mayor of Houston, he would go on to become the first owner of the Astros, a baseball franchise that's now won two World Series titles. But they still needed a new home, and Hofheinz saw that as an opportunity to do something truly groundbreaking. Having been soaked in the rain at previous stadiums, all of which were pretty much open air, he decided to build one with a roof. But not just any roof. He'd spent time working with architect and engineer Buckminster Fuller, known for developing the geodesic dome. Which explains how he came up with this, the Harris County Domed Stadium, better known as the Astrodome. The Astrodome is special and unique. It was the first of its kind. The country was coming out of World War II. We had new materials, new construction methods, you know, a lot of interest in, in innovation and, and being the first. And so you can imagine this kind of spaceship-like structure rising from the Gulf Coastal Plain. It would be an indoor stadium covered with an enormous fixed roof, which had never been done before and it was capable of holding 70,000 people in various configurations and layouts, making it truly multi-purpose. This will be the greatest concert hall in the world. It's the greatest convention hall in the world. It's the greatest exhibition hall in the world. And by all means, it's the greatest sports facility or entertainment facility that anyone has ever conceived. The venue could be converted into a football stadium, which was pretty important when the Houston Oilers had also signed up to play here, and crucially, it could even be set up for big concerts. You might be wondering why we keep going on about the roof, but it was a pretty significant addition. Putting a giant lid on the Astrodome would allow the venue to host events all year round, which was especially useful during Houston's monsoon season. Spectators were also kept comfortable during the infamous Texas heat, thanks to some pioneering tech. Vast networks of insulated ducts distribute the filtered, deodorized, conditioned air throughout every level. Yes, this was the world's first air-conditioned stadium. As with all construction projects, it began with an excavation, but this needed to be exceptionally deep, because although it doesn't really look like it from the outside, this is actually a nine-story structure. Now, three of those stories are actually subterranean. The Astrodome's floor, in fact, sits nine meters below the ground. And because this is Texas, the roof was designed to withstand all possible climatic conditions, including hurricanes and gusts of up to 165 miles an hour. 
The result was a gigantic steel lamella truss structure with a clear span of almost 200 meters, meaning there were no columns of supports interrupting anyone's views. It helped create a whopping 37,000 square meters of indoor space. That's the same as six White Houses, more than any other venue in the world back then. It was an engineering and architectural marvel at the time. Just the, the sheer innovation that came from nine acres of column-free space, the lamella trusses, the materials that were used, the cast concrete, 35 feet below ground when you're 45 minutes from the coast. But as I know myself, to be an icon, you can't just be sturdy, you've got to be striking as well. And so to quite literally top it off, the stadium was topped in 5,000 lucite panels that acted like individual skylights. And the result was truly spectacular. <laughs> However, while the roof was a success structurally and aesthetically, there was one crucial flaw. Despite being designed to let light through, which is needed when you've got a natural grass surface, not enough of it was getting in. To make matters worse, those panels were causing so much glare it was distracting the players. So they painted sections of the roof to stop it from happening. But that killed the grass for good. The solution was to replace it with a synthetic grass product that again was being used for the first time anywhere. What would this material that debuted at the Astro Dome go on to be called? Well, you might have heard of it. Astro Turf. I did not know that. Another thing you might not know is that despite those innovations, the roof had to be constructed the old fashioned way without any fancy digital technology. But that's not the case anymore. One thing you'll have noticed when we cover modern stadiums is they're generally designed and constructed using 3D model systems. A great example of this would be RISA 3D. For nearly 40 years, engineers have trusted it to create everything from complex geometries down to simple trusses effortlessly. Packed with powerful tools, the software allows users to build new models from scratch or to import and modify external data and files. A variety of modeling tools make drawing a breeze and sections can be copied and connected together to form complete structures. You can also get detailed reports on every single element of the build, whether it's checking load deflections or making sure you're adhering to design codes. That's something the builders of the Astrodome could probably have done with, as we're going to find out in a bit. Risa is just one of the great brands from across the world of construction that make up the Nemenshek Group. To discover the full range of what the company offers, click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. Teaming up with video sponsors like Nemenshek is what enables this channel to keep swinging, so please do take the time to go and check them out, we would really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to Houston and find out what happened to that iconic venue. A year after it opened, the stadium was the third most visited man-made attraction in the whole of the US. What made it so successful was the variety of events on offer. There was something for everyone, not just baseball and football fans. There were concerts from the likes of Judy Garland, supported by the Supremes, as well as Elvis Presley. The king of rock and roll's shows were so large, his biggest yet in fact, that he actually admitted to being scared of the venue and its capacity before he got up on stage. As for other sports, Muhammad Ali fought there twice in the 60s, and 100,000 people came to see Evil Knievel jump 13 cars on his Harley Davidson in 1971. But perhaps most famously of all, how can we forget the historic Battle of the Sexes tennis match between Billie G. King and Bobby Riggs in 1973? Yep, that also happened here. In its early years, only the Golden Gate Bridge and Mount Rushmore were more popular, and the venue would later star in multiple movies. But sadly, it wouldn't stay that way forever. Midway through the 1970s, the stadium was already hitting its peak. Despite being renovated in the late 80s, the following decade saw the Astrodome go into a steep decline. The 90s saw the Oilers move out in search of their own stadium, going to a whole other state. They're now the Tennessee Titans of the NFL. Three years later, even the Astros would follow suit. The Astros bidding farewell in grand fashion, beating the Dodgers 9-4 to clinch the National League Central Division title. By now, the venue was beginning to feel antiquated and unable to compete with the modern facilities that newer stadiums could offer. 
Then, in 2002, the Astrodome got a new neighbour. It was massive, featuring modern, state-of-the-art equipment that was designed to be multi-use. And when we say neighbour, we don't mean a few streets away. This guy moved in literally right next door. Now called the NRG Stadium, it has more seats with better transport connections and a roof that's impressive for a different reason. This one is retractable. The poor old Astrodome didn't stand a chance, and that year the venue put on what would be its very last event, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, which was pretty fitting for Texas. After briefly becoming useful again in 2005, when tens of thousands took shelter here in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, the final nail in the coffin came in 2008. That's when fire inspectors unearthed a dangerous amount of code violations, forcing its closure a year later. And it's been virtually abandoned ever since, used mainly as a storage space for the stadium next door that sealed its fate. Half a decade passed, and talk of demolishing the structure somewhat inevitably began to gain traction. With it sitting there doing nothing, you can kind of understand why. But don't forget, this was an American icon. Which is why the National Trust for Historic Preservation stepped in to try and save the Astrodome. It was a move that ended in victory for a venue that, despite those flaws that led to its closure, remains in good shape. It is designated uh, both as a state antiquities landmark here in Texas and listed in the National Register of Historic Places at the federal level. The building is structurally in remarkable condition. There's been a recent engineering report and study done in the last several years to attest to its structural condition. Its protected status saved it from the wrecking ball, despite it costing Harris County around $200,000 a year to maintain. Now, that decision was made years ago, but it seems that many Houstonians are still keen to keep the Astrodome as long as it's used for something new. According to a poll from the Houston Business Journal, almost 90% of people think it should be renovated and repurposed. And that's been the intention for more than a decade now. In fact, several schemes have been put forward over the years. 2014 saw a call from the Urban Land Institute to turn it into an indoor park. And in 2016, a more ambitious plan was unveiled. The A-Dome project would have seen the stadium uncovered and stripped down to its structural elements, with a park placed outside rather than inside the building. Visitors would be able to see the pioneering engineering that went into the dome's construction more closely, while the interior could again be used for public events. But no ideas made it past the render stage. Many of the proposals in the past have tried to use the structure that's within the stadium. So all the concourses and, and things of that nature and ramps, those are not suitable any longer. It, they're deep, they're dark, they're concrete, they're low ceiling heights, and they really don't fit current code. But the latest idea announced in 2024 and co-led by the company that Jerry works for could actually be the most likely to succeed. Vision Astrodome is a $1 billion redevelopment concept from architecture firm Gensler and a non-profit group called the Astrodome Conservancy. They proposed transforming it into a building that houses four structures in one, all contained within that famous dome. Surrounding a new, flexible arena space in the centre would be restaurants, retail units, office and commercial space. And because this is Houston, Texas, there's also a NASA centre and a rodeo experience. There would even be a sweeping pedestrian boulevard that runs all the way through the dome and surrounding buildings, including the NRG Stadium. Apparently, the planners took inspiration from New York's High Line. We would preserve this incredible interior volume. What we would do, though, is bring to life that entire ground floor all around the Astrodome that spills out onto a, a, a great circular lawn. There's so many people would love to go in and see it and kind of visit the Astrodome and relive some of those experiences. We like to say if, if this work were easy, it would be done. It's challenging to find the right ingredients to, to bake this cake. And um, we have, I think Vision Astrodome has been remarkably successful in initiating that conversation. 
Now, if you're assuming that taxpayers alone are going to be forking out for this, then that's not entirely true. The idea is to pay for it with a mix of public money, but also some private investment. And by filling the venue with what's called revenue generating space, the hope is that's going to be more appealing for both Harris County and its taxpayers, but also private investors as well. Although in theory, that's all proved to be a pretty difficult balancing act. Still, not everyone is convinced. The CEO of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, one of the main stakeholders, said the plan does not align with its strategic vision. Meanwhile, a county spokesperson has come out saying that the concepts announced so far haven't resulted in viable funding and maintenance solutions. It might be that this latest vision just gets cast aside like the others, but the Conservancy is confident that it can win over the doubters. The challenge really is working with all of the stakeholders. How do we navigate those so that it can be a win for all parties, the county and the residents of the county, uh, the people of Houston, but also the NFL franchise and uh, the other tenants that utilize that park. And so we're taking all of that into account when we are working to propel vision down the road. All buildings eventually come to the end of their serviceable lifespan but few have a story as illustrious as the Astrodome. It's why this historic structure, despite a major downfall, is still being saved from destruction. But it can't just be left to crumble away forever. Something must be done to give it new purpose. Whether it's this latest idea or yet another still waiting to be revealed, let's hope it doesn't take light years to get lift off. This video was sponsored by Nemeshek. Don't forget that you can find out more about the Nemeshek group and Risa 3D down at the link below. And when you go and check out our video sponsors, it directly supports the channel. So we'd really appreciate you guys taking the time to go and do that. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.